So let us talk about American College of Critical Care Medicine algorithm. So this is what the algorithm says, the management within the first hour. Whenever a child presents to you with clinical features of septic shock, first of all you will recognize the decreased mental status and perfusion in the child. You will begin high flow oxygen in all these children and establish excess, vascular excess in the child. Intraosseous or intravenous excess according to PALS. So, this algorithm corresponds to the PALS guidelines. So, there is no ambiguity between them. Intravascular excess is ideal. In case you are unable to obtain intravascular excess, time should not be wasted on trying for other things or trying for central venous excess. It takes time. You can go in for intraosseous excess which should be done in tibia. Anything which can be given through a peripheral venous route can easily be given through the tibia route as well. You can give fluids, you can give blood, you can give drugs. So, IO is the alternate second best access if IV access is not available. And that access should be obtained. All these steps should be taken within 5 minutes. If you see, when I was a student, I used to, we used to think, ki, why are these boxes not corresponding to these minutes? They have very particularly placed them like that, that 5 minute say pehle, before this 5 minute comes, this has to be, this step has to be completed. So, within 5 minutes, you have to complete this step. Next, in the next 5 to 15 minutes, you will start with, because you have in the, it will take 5 minutes for you to assess and obtain IV access and secure the access. Then you will start with fluid therapy. The hallmark of management of any shock is fluid management. So, if you will first show that the child is not having already features of any volume overload. So, you will check for hepatomegaly which will check for your right sided volume overload circulation and rails or crackles which will check for the pulmonary edema that is left sided volume overload. And after if they are no, none of them have been ruled out, both of them have been ruled out, you will start with boluses. The first bolus will be 20 ml per kg of isotonic saline. It can be isotonic saline which is normal saline. You can also use another crystalloid like Ringer's lactate. But these guidelines, they use the word saline at all places. In the text, they do say that Ringer lactate and normal saline can be interchangeably used. And after each 20 ml per kg, you will reassess the patient. So, you give 20 ml per kg. How fast do you give it? It is given over each bolus. On the side, the key points I will be writing. Each bolus should be given over a period of 5 to 10 minutes. So, 20 ml per kg over 5 to 10 minutes. Then reassess the child. Still shock not improving and no features of volume overload, another bolus 20 ml per kg over 5 to 10 minutes. Then reassess, then another bolus over 5 to 10 minutes. So, total 3 boluses according to these guidelines can be given up to 60 ml per kg until improved perfusion happens. You will stop immediately irrespective of the number of bolus. If, suppose you have given one bolus and the patient develops rails, crackles or hepatomegaly, you will stop. Because if features of volume overload develop, hemodynamic overload develop, you will not give further fluid boluses. You Simultaneously, you will correct hypoglycemia and hypocalcemia if they are present and you will begin antibiotics within first 15 minutes. So, IV broad spectrum antibiotics, first shot should be given, a separate uh, IV access you can obtain and through that you will give the first shot of antibiotic. After this, you will see whether the patient is improving or not. If the patient improves, fine. You will monitor the patient, you will evaluate, you will continue antibiotics and so on. But if after three boluses, the patient is still in shock, you will call it as fluid refractory shock. Whenever you label the patient as fluid refractory shock, you will begin catecholamines. You will start with vasoactive agents through the IV or IO, inotropic infusion, right? Preferably, what is the drug of choice to start? The guidelines have changed after, after so many years. When, see, I'm not that ancient, but still, I'm much senior to you. And so, when I was doing my MD, at that time, the guidelines and what we used to do was, we used to start with dopamine initially and then we used to go in for epinephrine or norepinephrine. But now, the guidelines are very clear. When I was in, you know, just passing out from MD, at that time, the talk had a lot of guidelines have, had started changing, saying, that upfront epinephrine is better than dopamine and a few years later those guidelines were written in gold. They were written in you know uh, block letters that now for all practical purpose in case of post neonatal age that is infancy and children any septic shock you will 
first start with epinephrine if any vasoactive agent is to be started. Please remember that this flow chart, this entire discussion we are doing, it does not include newborns. Neonatal septic shock is an entirely different thing. In neonates, we still start with dopamine first and then we move to other vasoactive agents. Neonatal septic shock is not being discussed because I am not discussing neonatology here. So those have to be, those are important, they have to be read separately. But epinephrine, you will start, you will start at the lowest possible dose, which is 0.05 microgram per kg per minute and slowly increase up to 0.3 microgram per kg per minute. If you want to obtain airway access, you want to intubate the patient or you want to put a central venous line, whether it is a femoral line or it is a jugular or subclavian line, you will have to use, uh, you will have to give, uh, you can use atropine or ketamine. Atropine will be useful for secretions in case of intubation and ketamine will be useful for pain control and sedation of the person if needed. They are not mandatory but they are given if needed. Now, you will try to the patient for epinephrine. See, there are certain institutions where certain people, they are not very confident, especially old school examiners. Nothing wrong in that. Experience is always more important than brilliance. And we should always be learning from our senior professors. I, I know so many of my senior professors who are pioneers in the field of septic shock and critical care. And they still feel that Despite all these guidelines, you put them aside. They still feel norepinephrine is better than epinephrine. And these guidelines also indirectly, they accept that. They say that uh, in case it is cold shock, obviously you would have started epinephrine. And uh, you will titrate between 0.05 to 0.3 microgram per kg per minute. In case of warm shock, an option, an alternative way is you can add norepinephrine as well, which should be added into the central venous access ideally. Because norepinephrine can cause peripheral vasoconstriction very strongly. So the dose will be again same 0.05 microgram per kg per minute and you will titrate it upwards. Now in case you are giving epinephrine or norepinephrine and you have reached upper dose 0.3 microgram per kg per minute ho gaya hai. Still shock is not improving. Here you will think of catecholamine resistant shock. Now there can be a scenario where epinephrine or norepinephrine are not available. Epinephrine is adrenaline, norepinephrine is noradrenaline. They are not available. What you will do? In case you were use, you were you plan to use epinephrine in cold shock, the alternative will be dopamine. In case of cold shock, also the alternative will be dopamine. But please look at the dose. In case it is a cold shock and you are using dopamine, it is not the first line agent, but alternate agent which can be used. In case it, you are using it, the dose is less than 10 microgram per kg per minute. And in case you are using in warm shock, you the dose will be equal to or more than 10 microgram per kg per minute. Very, very important concept here. Dopamine produces effects which are dose dependent. In very early doses, 1 to 2 to up to 5 microgram per kg per minute, dopamine has a renal vasodilatory effect. Between 5 to 9 microgram per kg per minute, dopamine has a strong, you know, cardiac stimulant action as well as it has a, you can say, BP elevating action. It has a vaso slight vasodilatation, marginal vasodilatation with cardiac stimulant action. But if case you would increase the dose from 10 or go above 10 microgram per kg per minute, many institutions use dopamine use of 20 microgram per kg per minute. It produces intense vasoconstriction. For a patient who is already in cold shock, intense vasoconstriction may sometimes not be needed. And so in case of cold shock, if you are using dopamine, the dose will be less than 10 microgram per kg per minute. In patient of warm shock, the dose will be more than 10 microgram per kg per minute. This will be very clear when we in the end of this video, we discuss the summary of the drugs, right? But for all practical purpose, for entrance exams, see entrance exams are like you have to choose black and white. There are no grays here. You know, life may always gray, hota hai. it can be relative. But in entrance exam, you have to be very clear. If they ask you, fluid refractory shock, post neonatal age, what is the next agent to start? Epinephrine. Can you use norepinephrine? Yes. Where would you prefer norepinephrine if you have to use? In warm shock, right? If both epinephrine or norepinephrine are not available, which agent to use? Dopamine. What will be the dose? If cold shock is there, cold peripheries are there, poor pebble pulses, severely improved capillary refill time, the dose will of dopamine as alternative agent will be 5 to 9 microgram per kg per minute. And in case it is a warm shock, bounding pulses, 
warm peripheries and the flush capillary refill time the dose will be 10 or more microgram per kg per minute i hope i'm absolutely clear here so all this has to be done within first hour this is also called as the initial management the word initial management is not used in accm guidelines but pals guidelines uses the words initial management it calls it as initial one hour management 